Hey guys, it's Raphael here from XX Raphael Productions. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to transition between scenes in Unity, and I'm gonna show you two ways you can do this, okay? So, the very first one I'll show you is through a collision. So, if you're looking right now in our first scene, I'm gonna make my character move around, and if we collide with our green block over here, it will go say it works, because we have successfully transitioned to scene two, where we have also made our text say it works, okay? So we will do this with a collision method and also we will try to do this with a click of a button. I will show you in the video, so at least you'll know how it works and let's get started. Okay, so I'm gonna start off like how I did in my initial state where we're gonna assume we have a project here without a new scene yet and as if you are doing this for the first time, okay? So the example I showed earlier is just um, what you want to achieve, all right? So let's go ahead and first show you that if I go ahead and play this, right now I simply have a moving character and that is represented by this code right here. So I don't know your personal project, so depending on the way your project is set up, you should be able to implement the same code. Um, the ones that I'm about to type out, but don't worry about the way it works. Okay, so I'm going to show you, if you're making an application, you will most likely use a button as well, so I will show you how to implement that based on collision, or also based on pressing a button. So, for this first, let's go ahead and make a new script, okay? So I'm going to go back to my um, project window here, I'm going to go down and right click, create, and I'm going to do a C sharp script. And you can call this script, hmm, let's see, we can do maybe game behavior. Just assuming you're making a game as well, because I mean Unity can be made, can be also used to create applications, so I know it's meant for games, so I'm just going to do game behavior, alright? Now we're going to go ahead into our main camera, so go to our main camera, where our canvas is already set up for this. I'm going to go add component. And for this, what I am going to do is look for scripts, so go to the bot, um, drop down box, and I'm gonna go ahead and choose game behavior. That is the um, behavior, that's a script we had created, so let's go ahead and do that right now, all right? So, double click on that, and here is where we're gonna set up our um, method. And with this method, we will refer to this plenty of times, okay? As we are gonna use game tags as well in order to cause the scene to change when our player hits it. So, let's go ahead and create a new method. I'm going to do public void and this will be scene to move to. I should probably zoom in as well for the people with the small screens. So let's go create a new one. Let's go, before we can do anything though, we have to imp um, add in a Unity um, engine. So I'm going to do using Unity engine. But this time we're going to do dot scene management. This way we are able to use the code load scene so that we can actually use to load the scene. So right now to load the scene, it's simply just one line. We're just scene manager dot load a scene. Okay, so the string right now is empty because we haven't yet actually created a new scene. So if I go to the folder right now and do that, oops, let me it's actually updating because I just typed in a whole bunch of code. So I'm gonna do scenes. If you notice right now, we only have one scene. That is the sample scene that we are currently editing. So let's go ahead and create a new one. Um, control click, create, and do, uh, where is it, scene. Let's see, you can simply call this something easy. Scene two, maybe. We don't have to really worry about a complicated name. In fact, I'd suggest you keep your, um, keep your scene name simple so that when you refer to it in your code, it's not a hassle to type out, basically. Now the last, next thing we're going to do is go to file and we're going to do um, build settings. On build settings, before we, because before we can actually refer to this in a code, we have to actually add the open scene. So click on your first scene, which is sample scene, or whatever you called your first scene, and we're going to click add open scenes. Alright, let's read the first one, it should say zero, and now go to scene two. Now scene two should be empty because it's a new scene. It'll, it'll be fun. Like I mean, like I mean, obviously, if you already have a scene set up, well, 
don't worry about it being empty but if you just create a new a new one don't worry about it being empty for now but simply click on it and then click add open scenes again that should add both scenes onto of your build settings okay so make sure they're also ticked so that they can be used as well in the program so you can X out of that now but just to make sure it actually added just go back to build settings just to make sure and it cl clearly is working so for our new scene let's add something to make it uh, let's see you can decorate it to kind of make it look like it's working okay so I'm gonna go UI canvas again and what I want to do is simply add in a text so recalling our example I, I simply added in a text that says it works now let's go ahead and for our canvas we're gonna go to our settings uh, I'm gonna change our screen space to screen cam screen space camera so right the, the default was overlay but change it to screen space camera and then drag in your main camera on the hierarchy drag that in and you should drag it onto the box that says render camera and then that whole rectangle should now be smaller it shouldn't be the huge rectangle that you see initially okay so now let's go and right click our canvas and go back to UI and add in a text this text will simply be proof that our scene has managed to load so this will be it works if you now you can say whatever you want to it doesn't really matter if you are seeing this you have so it works if you are seeing this you have successfully transitioned scenes okay I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make the font size let's see maybe 40 mm, okay that's just be good I mean let's go ahead and change the color to white and this is how it should look like if we successfully transition all right so don't worry about this looking kind of ugly because I'm only doing this to make it to kind of give an example as to how the scene transition works now let's go back to our um, main scene and okay I guess we can go back to our visual studio so whatever code editor opened up now we can finally add in scene 2 that's what we called our second scene so type in here scene 2 and it is yes it is case sensitive so make sure you got your capitalizations correct okay and then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do an instance this is gonna be mostly for the if you're doing this for a button this should, we don't need this but if you are doing it for a game it's good to implement this and so do public static let's see game behavior which is what we called our class earlier and this will be an instance and we also want to do if we want to put this code we're going to do an if statement and else if as well but we want to do this in awake so not over here let's do this over here and make a new method that we called void awake oh oh no I'm sorry <laughs> it's a whole bunch of alright so if it gave extra curly braces like that just simply erase that and you should be stuck with this just like the other two so basically awake is called before even the first frame update basically okay that's what awake is for before it's literally before this all right so awake is before start is even called so what I'm gonna do now is do an if statement and we're gonna manipulate what we have with instance so if instance equals equals null I'm gonna set instance to this Do an else if and let's see instance okay that will say it's not equal to this and we're going to destroy that game object okay now here we go let's go back to our movement of player and don't worry about this okay like I'm right now all you're seeing here is the code for the player to move don't worry about this if your program is and is focused on something different your code will look different so the only thing the only thing you'll have to worry about is what I'm gonna type underneath so I'm gonna add a reminder to myself so don't all right so don't worry about the code above the only code that you have to worry about in terms of the scene transition is this we will simply do public on collision enter 2d and that is a built-in method for when it collides and what we're gonna do now is make well sorry not make we're gonna add in a new tag okay so 
here is where our previous let's go back to our assets folder and let's now in our canvas right click this to drop down and let's add in a block transition recalling what happened when we hit the block that was the uh, way we managed to make it transition okay so let's go ahead and I'm gonna go uh, what should I do uh, click on this I'm gonna go add in a component because we're gonna make it detect collision so co box collider 2d and we're also gonna add in a rigid body 2d now for this rigid body make sure your gravity scale is set to zero so that your player does not fall down and you'll also do the same thing for block transition so rigid body 2d and box collider 2d as well and just like the other one earlier we will do gravity scale to zero okay now let's go ahead and actually make sure you click on your block that you added so the green block is what I added depending on what your project is built for it may be different but let's go ahead and add in a new tag so we're gonna add tag and we're gonna call this tag let's see you can do uh, scene transition tag or something like that it can be it can be whatever you want it doesn't really matter okay and we're gonna set that so go to block transition again and we're gonna set that tag so go back to the drop down box and now you should see your new tag that you just added click on that and then command s to save now the last thing we need to do is go back to our uh, visual studio and now this is where we're gonna um, type in an if statement so if collision dot game object dot tag equals equals so this will be an if statement and let's go ahead and let's compare it to what we did so scene transition tag is the name now as I said before it is case sensitive so make sure you got your capitalizations in the correct way so scene transition tag and then we should now do game behavior which is the name of our other script so our script was game behavior dot instance and then the method which was let's see scene to move to let's go ahead and test it out so it can wait it can take a bit sometimes for unity to update but let's go ahead and click the play button all right let's go ahead and hit the block and there you have it so it is successfully transitioned through collision now like I said before I will show you another example where we use a button instead of a, a collision so if this is all you need Feel free to click out of the video and hopefully this helped you out. Now for the people here who want to see the button click, continue on, alright? So what we're gonna do for this is optional, okay? This is only for people who want to do the button. Right click the canvas and go to UI and add in a button. We are going to resize this button. Ooh, ooh that's way that's way too big. Um I'm gonna resize that button and I'm going to make the text bigger as well. So to do that, I'm going to go to the text and I'm going to go to the font size. I'm going to make this maybe 30. Yeah, that should be good. Take me to next. And it, your text can say anything you want. You don't have to worry about it, all right? Just make sure it says take me to the next scene. Um, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and do that, all right? So th this way, when this happens... You we're going to click this button and we are simply going to transition to the very next scene, alright? So the way to do that, simply click on the button, make sure it's selected, and make sure you scroll down over here in the Inspector tab. Make sure you're on Inspector before you do this. Go to On Click, add in a plus symbol. Now for this runtime, um, runtime only, make sure it's selected. You want to drag in your main camera, which is where we put in our script earlier. Go to no function. We're gonna do the drop down box for this. Uh, what do you call that? Game behavior. And then look for the method. So it was seen to move to. <coughs> All right, so click on the play button again and let's see what happens. And there you have it, folks. Now, when you click on the button, it is clearly working. Now, let's go ahead and show you the collision. It should yield the same result. 
yeah, and there you have it. So, if this video helped you out, leave a like and subscribe, and also comment down below if you need if you have any extra questions, and uh, I should be able to answer them in my spare time, alright? So, now you know how to transition scenes with collisions, and also using a button. So, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you soon.